Hey, wonderful family. Another sweet day, another beautiful day. Another time to quickly share the word and be blessed. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Come with me. Let's go quickly into Matthew chapter 14 from uh, verse... Uh, what's this now? From verse... 26, not 25. Oh, sorry. Let's go from verse 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. He went to, do the, he went to fellowship. He was doing the will of God. Coming back, as usual, the enemy was trying to prevent him or trying to get, get rid of him. You wouldn't say that the wind was contrary as part of the will of God, no. Because if it was the will of God, um, it would not try and prevent Jesus from attaining or, or getting the will of God done. That was, obviously, it was a demonic thing. Now, and when this... What did he do? Did he stop the wind? No. He didn't stop the wind. He didn't pay attention to the wind. He just walked because it was his mindset to get to the other side. He just walked on the water. Storm, wind, waves, they couldn't stop him. And you know he was our example here. He was showing us what, what is possible. As he left, he left us with his name and said that the things he did, we will do greater. Because he leaves us with his name, because he goes on to the Father. He's gone to the Father to, to, to cement a relationship with the Father, and he's left us with his name. So whatever he did, he's saying, that we have to my things. All right. Now, follow me. And on the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went on to them walking on the sea. He didn't say he stopped the, the, the storm. He just went on to them walking on the sea. No storm can stop you. No contrary wind can stop you. As long as you don't pay attention to it. Uh, presently, there are certain storms that seem to be trying to rear their ugly head around me. I'm preaching to you. I'm preaching to myself. I'm not to pay attention to it. I'm to just carry on as if what God said is so. Not to look at the storm, not to look at the wind. In the midst of that storm, I will still get what God has said. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying it is a spirit, and they cried out for fear, because he was doing something that was not natural. He, should, he shouldn't, first and foremost, he shouldn't be able to walk on the sea, whether it was turbulent or not. And secondly, that sea in its turbulent form should have dissuaded Jesus from walking on it, even if he could walk on the sea. So he was doing something that was outside the norm. You'll be doing things that are outside the norm and people will see you and scream, this is not right. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it's a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Jesus always comes with a word of courage and encouragement. He never comes to cause fear. Where once fear comes, he, dis he dispels it. He says, be not afraid. Be not afraid. I speak unto you now, brothers and sisters. Be not afraid. All right, let's go on. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come to thee on the water. This was a specific request of Peter. Okay, you said you are Jesus walking on that water. I know that Jesus has the power to do anything. So if it is really Jesus... Ask me to come on the water. And if I come on the water, then it's you. He had confidence that if it was Jesus, he would be stepping out on Jesus' word. And all that Jesus said was, come. I just love that. Very simple. Not, he wasn't verbose. He just said, come. And that was enough to suspend Peter if he walked. As long as Peter could step out of that boat, that word, come, was large enough, buoyant enough to carry Peter walking on the water. Notice he didn't say storm, stop first. All he said was come. He didn't address the wind. 
he just addressed the individual, Peter. He just gave a word to Peter. Now, Peter, this is your uh, flotation device. Use it. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, notice only Peter had enough confidence in Jesus to attempt what he was done. There were all disciples there, but just one out of the twelve had enough nerve to ask, Lord, bid me come, and had confidence to do the same. The others had the opportunity, even as Peter had asked that, the others could have said, Ah, Lord, also let me also join him and partake of this miracle. No, their confidence wasn't that high. Your confidence should be high in Jesus. Your confidence should be high in the word. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. So he, he says that he walked on the water. Remember, the storm didn't stop. The waves didn't stop. The wind didn't stop. Verse 30, but when he saw the wind boisterous, ah, 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 ah. you remember, he says, bid me come to you. So his business was coming to Jesus. So if you are going somewhere, you have no business looking around, observing what is going on, especially if God has told you, come. If he says, come, your focus and your attention should be on that, come, and on him. You are, going, you are doing that which he says you should do. That's what your focus should be on, not what is happening around. When he now turned around to look at what was happening around, of course, the enemy wasn't happy with that. But when he saw the wind boisterous, remember the wind was always boisterous. So it is when he saw it, it was always boisterous. It had never ceased being boisterous whilst he walked to Jesus. When he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sing. That's the point he started sinking once the fear came. He cried saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Hallelujah. And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. So at the end of the day, all that uh, boisterous wind and everything ceased. It tells you that that was sent there by design, not from God, but by the enemy to stop them from getting what they had to do. But as long as they continued doing what God had said or what was in the heart of God through Jesus, it couldn't stop them. And when they had finished, the wind ceased. Now look at that statement. Then that day, day, day that when the ship came, and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. One key thing I want to point out here is, do you realize that Peter's weight, Peter's sinking, and Jesus stretching forth his hand and catching Peter, he didn't drag Jesus down. Rather, Jesus lifted Peter up. There's no problem you have that can that is too big for God, that it will drag him down. Rather, if you... Call out for help. Stretch out your hands to him. He will lift you up. You can't drag him down. He will lift you up. So do not have any fears. Do not panic. He loves you. He loves you. God bless you. Hallelujah.